Hey, greetings, performance reviews, where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. And today, just to clarify, is not a review. It's just an unboxing of this UV850, which is the actual model number of this Shark vacuum. Now, just in full interest of transparency, what is my relationship with Shark Ninja? Absolutely nothing. I have no relation to EuroPro. Uh, nor did I sell my soul to the vacuum devil. What I am talking about there is, if you're not familiar with Shark, their business model is we make the disposable lighters of the vacuum industry. And it has been like that uh, since they started going by the Shark name. They've gone by Infinity and EuroPro uh, in years past. And this was the third branding attempt before they actually captured the American market. Now, with all that said, let's take a look at what we got. We have a duo clean technology. Um, it's a lift away ADV. I don't explain what ADV means. <laughs> um, and it's a performance. And in their lineup, this is about middle uh, of the road in terms of their lineup. You know, it's not, it's not their cheapest. Uh, it's like their second or third most expensive uh, as of right now in 2021. Now, I haven't used a Shark vacuum in years for obvious reasons. So let's go ahead and open this thing up and see just kind of what you get and what, what the state of Shark is. Okay, so the first thing is they are giving you a quick start guide right in your face on the lid. I do like that. Uh, and they do explain where the filters are. It just says HEPA filter. It doesn't actually um, tell you to change the filter. No, we are greeted with the actual manual. And then everything is in paper bags. Uh, the picture of what you get, some more packing material. Very, uh, very odd uh, dusting brush upholstery combo. So that's what's in there. Well, at least everything is labeled which bag it goes into. Um, a very cheap feeling turbo tool. Ah. Okay, that's jogging my memory now. So this is no different than other sharks of yesteryear in that it is going to be off gassing for a very long time. You know, I would get sharks in on the repair bench sometimes that would be, you know, eight months old, a year old, uh, and they would just be full on off gassing uh, still. So that's not just of yesteryear. Let's see here. We got, what's, what's in this, first of all? This is, okay, this is the hose. Everything in the paper bags is just very, it's kind of bizarre. All right. Um, Oh, smells. Oh, man. I wonder this has a lead warning in the plastic. All right. So. Odd choice. So the wand is aluminum for about a foot, and then the other foot of the wand is uh, plastic down here. Very strange. <laughs> Even the machine comes wrapped. Uh, in a bag. Just to clarify, this is everything you get in the box. I'm still blown away by the amount of these paper bags, which ironically are double lined as if they were intentionally or, or originally maybe a vacuum bag. So <laughs> ironic uh, that the bagless vacuum cleaner comes with probably a year's worth of paper that you could have made vacuum bags out of if you were making them out of paper bags. Now, just to be fair, paper bags aren't a thing anymore. Vacuum bags, they're actually made out of plastic from like recycled milk jugs that's been woven. So that's really not a thing anymore. Uh, as we know, bagged vacuums uh, tend to be the more economical uh, and more environmentally s sound thing. But just a note on that if you weren't familiar with a bagged vacuum, uh, because if you only bought your vacuum from the grocery store, you may not have seen one recently. <laughs> All right, 
Now that I've removed all the packing material, sorry, it's hard to keep a straight face with the amount of packing material this thing had with it. Let's get to putting it together and looking at it. Let's just first look at the head. This head design is very weird. Um, you know, I've seen the argument for two counter-rotating brush rollers, but never brush rollers that spin the same direction on the same motor. Uh, I would say I haven't checked it yet, and I'll put it here if I'm wrong. Um, but this doesn't, this isn't approved by the Carpet and Rug Institute, and I think the reason being, it has these blades uh, in the brush roller. It's actually no uh, bristle in the middle of the brush roller, just this blade. It's very odd. It's going to be weird for the pickup test. Uh, but what I was saying was that these blades, kind of sharp. These could potentially hurt certain types of carpet, I would imagine. Uh, you definitely wouldn't want that running on hard floor. Despite there being a soft roller in the front, I hope the hard floor mode shuts off this roller at least. We'll find out. Now, ah, there is a way to get to... Okay, that's odd. So there's a quick release for this roller. That actually feels really, really heavy. Oh, I can see the cartridge bearing in there. I don't know why this is so heavy. Um, it's a really thin brush roller. Uh, and you can see that there's like a very little mechanism there. We have drive and then you have these teeth. And I will say I'm disappointed to see these teeth still here because uh, these teeth, they're not gonna be here for long. Uh, when, they, when this sort of head would come in for service in the past, these teeth would always be broken off. So it's interesting you can service and get to one roller, but the other roller you can't. Very odd. And putting this back in. Yeah, all right, so that's easy enough to get in. You can use a coin uh, if something gets stuck in here. Uh, and that's about it. You have a big lift away pedal. Yep, but you just, ooh, that's stiff. And again, the, the smell of this, and I'm, I have my allergies kicking in right now, and I, I'm not allergic to the plastic, but other things happening with all the leaves falling off the trees, you know, it's created a lot of dust, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty stopped up right now, as you can probably tell by my voice, but I can still smell the plastic off-gassing. Uh, wait till my wife comes home with the sensitive nose. Uh, this is good. She's going to be uh, complaining about the smell of this, I'm sure. So let's assemble this. All right, that we have, you know, it's interesting. They have a strain relief boot on this hose. It's just a stretch hose. I like that it's not see-through because these stretch hoses always look nasty after a couple uses. So it's nice for it not to be see-through. Now, when we put together the last bit, okay, that goes up there. Now this is something that's a little bit weird that Shark does. Is you're supposed to wrap, you know, the cord here, but you do have a place up in this handle, but that prevents you from taking the handle off. Uh, oh, a little bit weird. And we have we have a big note saying, "Do not run the cord over with the vacuum cleaner." Thank you, Shark Ninja. That uh, lets us know what you think about people who buy these machines. Before we get to wrapping, I want to see where tool storage is. So it looks like. Just like in previous models of Cleva Shark products, if you'll remember I did that review on that Kenmore, um, this is the same way. And there's no real re place to store all the accessories. Maybe this store's on this side? Nope. Uh, so you're only stuck with those two for your onboard and then you better not lose that. Real quick, let's go on and tour the machine and see where everything is right here. There is a nice release for the bin. And then you are greeted, well, with the filter here that's in your face, along with a reminder that if it loses suction, uh, loss of suction may occur. We'll talk about that in a second. So if you're unfamiliar, oh, there's not even a latch here. It's just uh, just bending the lid. Oh, that's low quality. <laughs> Anyways, if you've never seen a shark bin, you know, a lot of companies like to talk about cyclone design or dust collection. This is a monocyclone design uh, that actually, if they really wanted to 
to make this work would work much better in a different direction, but I digress. Uh, so that's the cyclone, one cyclone design. Uh, we gen Generally, if we're gonna go bagless, say two to four seems to be the magic number. When you get up into like 25, that didn't work for them and it didn't work for Dyson either. So that's why they've gone to this uh, more premium cyclone. This also allows for a little bit more airflow uh, at the beginning of use. Now we have two washable filters as per the usual arrangement. And then there is another HEPA filter, if we remember. Man, that's sneaky. I don't think any customers are ever gonna know that's there. Uh, that is, you know, in previous years, this has been like clear, or at least obvious, that's just hidden. And then, uh, and then there's a... Uh, and if you're not familiar with, basically every time you vacuum, you wanna rinse these filters out. This thing, this HEPA cartridge, don't rinse this out. It's made of paper, uh, and it's fine enough they can actually pull the minerals out of your water. So this, you probably just change every three to six months. At least that's what yesteryear sharks were. So keep in mind, you do have a commodity that needs to be changed, even though it is a bagless vacuum of the vacuum. And then eventually you'll have to buy a second set. You might consider getting a second set just uh, so you can always have one drying. You can also rinse out this bin if need be, but. So that's what's on there. And then, oh, they're still using the switch. Oh, this, the switch is not confidence inspiring oh, at all. Well, let's test the suction of the shark. Now, normally I would just put the gauge on the end. Shark uses their own fitting. So I've rigged up a series of adapters there. And keep in mind, we are a mile above sea level. So that does kind of change things. Well, but let's see what it does. Oh. That sure was interesting. We're getting about 35 inches of working vacuum and about 80 sealed. Those are healthy numbers. Again, we haven't done anything to impede that. The bin has no dust in it. Man, that cord length is excellent at 30 feet. That should get you anywhere you need to go in an apartment or a small house. Now, if you're new to performance reviews, we're gonna do a standard pickup test, which we use a studio mic, so you're gonna hear the real sound of the machine. This has breakfast cereal, flour, cat litter, and fresh pet hair. We're going to use this on the number one setting, which is the hard floor setting of this machine. It does not have the ability to stop the middle roller, so that means this is okay for tile floor, or a linoleum floor, but you probably wouldn't want to use this on something like wood. Uh, it could scratch it. Well, uh, yeah, you can see there's some flour left behind. It's snow plowed, a little bit of cat litter. Um, it did well with the pet hair and the breakfast cereal. I'm not sure how this got here, but I have a feeling what happened was because it exhausts like down, I have a feeling that the air just moved it there. It's not the actual nozzle. Let's take a look. And so let's take a look at the bottom side of it real quick. Cause I'm curious. Yeah, you can see that the, here you can see the flower just stuck to the rear wheel of this. Um, so definitely not the worst, but not the best. Oh, oh, there's a bunch of animal hair stuck in the soft roller. That's odd. I would have thought that running it for a few uh, seconds after the pickup test would have eliminated that, but apparently not. So yeah, I would imagine hair is going to get stuck in this. That's why there's a quick release on this. They know you're going to have to pull this out. Alright, interesting. All right, let's see how it does on my soft carpet. Again, we have breakfast here, flour, cat litter, and fresh pet hair. And we're gonna use that in the number two setting, which is the carpet setting. I don't know if that came out on camera, but the roller struggled to get up to the proper RPM. All right. Well, we see some uh, breakfast cereal on the edge. So I think edge cleaning really isn't its thing. Ooh. 
kind of rubbed a lot of that flour into the carpet. We have, yeah, we got cat litter in the carpet here. Yeah, so it actually kind of embedded the finer things. That's interesting. And then a little bit of pet hair, but very little. So it did about as expected of any of the grocery store style machines. Well, folks, thanks for watching. Again, this is not a review. Stay tuned for the review. Big thank you to our Patreon supporters for helping make this happen. Check the link below if you want to support the channel and see some insider content on Patreon. Well, I hope this has given you a good look of what you're in for when you get one of these sharks. Have a wonderful day.